Hi, everybody. I'd like to share a story with you today called Abigail, the Bell of Bravery. Go away! Rooney and her friend Danny ducked just in time. The baseball zipped over their heads and smacked the front door with a powerful wham. You know, Sam, Rooney said as she picked up the ball and ran her fingers over the seams, you don't have to be so rude. We can all play together. Rooney's brother rolled his eyes. He was busy throwing pitches into the net in, the, in their front yard. I don't want you two out here while I'm practicing, he growled. Why don't you just go inside and play with your dolls or something? Rooney's hand reached for her wrist, where two small bells hung from a delicate gold bracelet. She rolled them gently between her fingers. God, she thought to herself, please forgive my brother. He needs prayer and patience just as much as I do. The girls looked up at each other. Let's go. As they started to walk inside, Rooney noticed a large white moving truck pulling into the driveway across the street. A blue car with a faded top pulled in too, just behind it. Hey, Danny asked, isn't that the kid from school moving in this weekend? Yeah, that's Anthony, Rooney pointed to one of the three tall boys getting out of the car. He's a sixth grader and those are his brothers. The girls watched as Anthony and his family started to unload the boxes and take them up the driveway into the house. Sam looked up from his pitching practice, grumbled loudly. Oh no, you have got to be kidding me. He's so annoying. Sam huffed and puffed as he moved his tea from out, out from behind the net. Can't, I can't believe he's moving to our street. Dear God, Rooney thought. Why is my brother acting like this? He and Anthony were on the same Little League team last season. Doesn't he remember who helped him with his curveball? Rooney and Danny watched Sam grab his bat. He marched toward the street and set up his tee at the edge of the lawn. Anthony's head poked out from behind the box he was carrying. Hey, Sam, he hollered. When we're done, can my brothers and I play with you? Sure, Sam was smiling but Rooney was nervous. You can play, why don't you catch this? And he swung and ripped a line drive. The ball sliced through the air and blasted a large cardboard box right out of Anthony's hands. He, he toppled off the curb and landed on his back. Rooney froze, her stomach tightened. Sam! Anthony stood up, brushing himself off, then he and his brothers marched down to the sidewalk. You're going to be sorry you did that, one of them yelled at Sam. Yeah, we're going to get you. Sam threw down his bat and shouted back at them. Danny grabbed Rooney's hand. Do you think they're going to fight, she whispered. Rooney couldn't breathe. Oh, no, Danny said as the red car pulled into the driveway. My mom's here. I got to go. As Danny ran down the steps, the boys continued to yell. Rooney's heart was beating wildly. Oh God, I am so scared, her eyes filled with tears. What do I do? Well, I have an idea, Rooney heard a familiar voice behind her. Mari, Rooney threw her arms around her little angel and hugged her tight. Thank God. Listen, everything is going to be okay. But first there's something you have to see. Just then, Rooney's mom called Sam's name from inside the house. Oh, coming! Sam stomped up the steps and slammed the door. The boys watched him, then turned and headed back towards their house. Now, Rooney wiped her eyes. I'm having a serious problem with my brother. I can see that. Mari flew up and put her arms around Rooney's neck. Being a real superhero has its challenges, huh? Rooney's stomach was in knots. You're right about that. You know, this problem is a tough one. It reminds me so much of Abigail. Rooney stared wide-eyed at the angel. Really? Who's Abigail? She's another Bible bell, and she would know exactly what to do in a situation like this. She has a very special power that you need to see. 
Rooney ran her fingers over the bells on her wrist. So Hannah, Esther, and now Abigail? Rooney scratched her head. What's her superpower? Mari smiled. Let's go find out. She fluttered her wings and hovered in the air. Hey, can I see one of those baseballs? Sure, Rooney said, relieved. Rooney reached for Sam's bucket and tossed a ball to Mari. She threw it up in the air and it began to spin around and around. It spun until pop! A flash of light revealed, in, revealed a wide wooden window that had 1 Samuel 25 etched on the front. Check it out! Rooney climbed up and looked through the window at the scene below. So, Mari explained, Abigail lives in that house with her husband, Nabal. He is a very rich man, but he's mean and disrespectful to others. In fact, he gets his family into some real trouble when he refuses to help someone in need. Mari pointed to the young man wearing a red sash. That's David. He'll be the king of Israel one day. But right now, King Saul is trying to find him and kill him. While they're hiding in those fields, David and his men, about 600 warriors, are watching over Nabal's shepherds and his sheep. They're protecting them. Well, that's pretty nice, Rooney thought out loud. Rooney looked closer. She could see a group of soldiers, and she watched as one of them spoke to David. My Lord, we've been here for many days. We need food and supplies. What should we do? Go down to Nabal's house, she heard David say. Greet him with his household and his household warmly and wish them well. Remind him that we watched over his shepherds and his sheep while they were with us. David continued. We treated them kindly. We need that same kindness shown to us. Tell him that we were that we will take whatever he can spare. Then Mari bumped the window and a new scene appeared. Inside the house, Rooney could see a big bearded round man stomping around and waving his hands wildly in the air. Mari, Rooney tapped the angel on her tiny shoulder. Didn't you say that, did, didn't you say that Abigail's husband, Nabal, is mean? I bet he isn't going to help David. You're right about that, Mari nodded. See, when Nabal hears the message, well, just listen. Are you serious, Rooney heard Nabal shouting at one of his servants? Who is this David, and why should I give him my bread and water and meat to this man? No way! Uh-oh, Rooney pressed her lips together. Yeah, Mari said. When David's servants, servants come back and tell him what Nabal said, David gets really angry. Draw up your swords, Rooney watched as David rose to his feet and gave orders to his men. We will go down to the house of Nabal and show him what happens when you treat another so harshly. Rooney was scared. Oh no, Mari. What's he going to do? Suddenly, Rooney could see a young man racing up to the house. Who's that? That's one of Abigail's servants, Mari explained. The man reached the doorstep and was greeted by a striking woman with a wide smile and kind eyes, dressed in a flowing purple robe. Wow, Rooney thought, that has to be Abigail. My lady, the man cried as the woman brought him into the house. David sent messengers out of the wilderness to talk to your husband, our master. They asked for his help, but he was harsh and mean, and he sent them away. These men were very good and kind to us. They treated us well while, we were in, while they were in our company. Something terrible is about to happen. I just know it. Calm down, Abigail thought for a moment. Rooney whipped around at Mari. David's so angry. How is Abigail going to help? You'll see. I know what to do, Abigail said to herself. I must act quickly. And she moved busily around her house. 200 loaves of bread, two jars of wine. Abigail talked out loud as she worked. 
five dress sheep, a sack of roasted grain, she said, collecting what she needed. She counted 100 cakes of raisin and 200 cakes of pressed figs. Once she had packed up everything, she turned to her servants and said, go on ahead, I will follow you. And with that, Abigail rode out to meet David and his men. Rooney watched as Abigail rode quickly toward the soldiers. When she reached them, Abigail fell to her knees and bowed before the future king. Pardon your servant, my lord. Please hear what I have to say. Pay no attention to that man, Nabal. His name means fool. He does not make wise choices. I did not see your men earlier today. As surely we live, the Lord has sent me to keep you safe from seeking re revenge with your own hands. Let these gifts that I have brought be given to your men. Rooney held her breath as Abigail spoke. The Lord God has a special plan for you. Her voice was strong and calm. You bravely fight his battles even though King Saul is trying to find you and take your life. God will protect you and fulfill his promise. And because you will make the right choice and not take these matters into your own hands, I know God will bless you. When he does, please remember me. David's, David's eyes softened and he leaned down and spoke gently. Praise the Lord, our God, who has sent you to me. God has used you to stop me from acting out of anger. May you be blessed for your good judgment. I am so grateful for you. Thank you for keeping me from making a terrible choice. David reached out his hand to accept what Abigail had brought him. Go home in peace. I have heard your words and I will grant your request. So, Mari continued, Abigail was... Um, Rooney, where'd you go, girl? Mari looked around. Finally, she noticed Rooney on the ground below, and her hands folded and her head bowed. Mari smiled and listened while Rooney prayed. God, thank you so much for this beautiful story. Abigail was so smart and strong and brave, and even though it was dangerous, she made the best choice for everyone, her house, her family, and David too. I know what I need to do. Will you help me be brave like Abigail? I know this power lives inside me too. Rooney grabbed Mari's hand. I'm going to talk to Anthony. I'm going to follow Abigail's example and show him love and kindness. I know I can do this with God's help. Yes, Mari did a flip in the air. You got this. Rooney ran to the kitchen. She remembered that her mom had made cookies the day before. She collected a few from a plate on the counter and wrapped them in a napkin. I can do this, she thought. And smiling as she walked out the front door she, and across the street. God, you can give me the same power you gave Abigail. So I know I can do this. You will make me brave. Rooney repeated those words as she reached Anthony's door and she took a deep breath. She, then she reached out, her, reached out and knocked three times. The door swung open and Anthony was standing there. What are you doing here, he asked. Your brother was out of line earlier. Did you come over here to cause more trouble? Rooney looked, at Anth looked Anthony right in the eye. No, I didn't. I'm here because I want to do what's right. Her heart was pounding. I'm sorry for the way my brother treated you. But that's, not the, but that's not the way the rest of my family does things. I came over to welcome you and your family to the neighborhood. Anthony looked at the package in Rooney's hands and then back at her. What's that? Rooney held out her hands. These are some cookies that my mom made. I wanted to share them with you. She kept going. Listen, Sam shouldn't have hit that ball at you. And that was a really bad choice but fighting with him is only gonna make things worse. We are neighbors now, and we should be here to help each other. I hope we can be friends. Anthony didn't say a word. He just stared at her, a blank look on his face. 
That's pretty cool of you, he finally said. Then he tilted his head to the side. And you're right, fighting won't solve anything, that's for sure. We'd probably just get into more trouble anyway. Rooney breathed a sigh of relief. Hey, I like baseball too. Maybe we can get the other kids on the block together for a game. Anthony smiled. That sounds good. It'll be nice to make some new friends here. Thanks, Rooney. See you around. You're welcome. See ya. Rooney walked back towards her house. Mari was waiting there for her, a small object shining brightly in her hands. Rooney grinned and started to run toward her. She knew exactly what it was. Mari opened her hands as the shining bell floated into the air. Rooney, you did it! This is the bell of bravery. Like Abigail, you have the power to do what's right, even when you feel scared. Abigail knew what needed to be done. God put wisdom in her heart, and she wasn't afraid to use the gifts that he had given her. You can do this too. Mari, Rooney admitted, I want to be brave like Abigail but it's so hard sometimes. What can I do? Mari squeezed Rooney's hand. A lot of the time, people know the right thing to do, but they have trouble finding the courage to do it. God wants you to remember that he loves you and you can trust him no matter what. And that love and trust is what will make you brave. Rooney held out her hands as the golden bell floated down. Her heart was beating so fast. Mari, what's happening to me? You're starting to realize the truth. Mari danced in the air. It won't be long now. Until what? What truth? Please tell me. Rooney took a deep breath as Mari looked at her, shaking her head. And give away the surprise? No way. Mari began to fly higher, heading up to the sky. Remember to pray, be patient, and be brave. You're learning to hear God's truth above the noise. What noise? Rooney called out to Mari, but she was already out of sight. Rooney thought hard for a few minutes, then she closed her eyes. God, she said, thank you so much for these powers. They really, they are really special. Please help me to use these gifts you have given me. I know that I can pray like Hannah, be patient like Esther, and brave enough to make the right choices like Abigail. There is something big coming. I can feel it. I'm so excited to find out what it is. Rooney unclasped her bracelet and looped on her, <clears throat> her brand new bell. She touched the letters on each of the bells. H-E-A. She gasped, grasped her wrist, and held it tightly to her chest and she smiled as she thought about her future. The end. I hope you like the story of Abigail and the kindness that she showed to others. Let's remember to always stay kind to everyone.